please put your hands together for the new CEO of the Fremantle Football Club, Simon Garlic. Um, the first decision of significance, Mark, was to, that we don't wear a tie tonight. I think the 41 degree rule must have kicked in. Um, but thank you to Mark uh, for the welcome. Thank you, Dale, for your comments. But most importantly, thank you all for coming tonight, but also for your, your dedication and commitment to our football club. Um, 41.6 degrees on December 3, I assume that's pretty standard. <laughs> I'll, I, you should know, just I heard reports back from Victoria that it's 16 degrees and raining there today. <laughs> Why anyone would live in that godforsaken place, <laughs> God only knows. Um, I, I think it actually got to the point where our gun recruit, Caleb Sarong's family, actually lit a fire yesterday at home in Warrigal. So um, I'd, I'd also just, on a more serious note, really, really like to thank the Frio family, which I think is represented um, in the best possible way by those of you here tonight for the incredibly warm welcome that my family and I have received in the short time since we joined the Purple Army. It's an absolute honour and a privilege to be standing here today as the CEO of the Fremantle Football Club. I mentioned on the day I was appointed um, to the role that during the process I'd started to understand the true significance of Fremantle as one of the most influential regions in the history of Australian football. Dale touched upon it, the heritage, the tradition, the achievement, which I'm admittedly still very much learning about is staggering. Um, the learning curve is a steep one, but as I live Currently, in this beautiful town, I'm starting to gain a real sense of understanding of this area that's produced some of football's, not Perth's, not Western Australia's, but Australia's greatest ever players. Along with the rivalries, the stories, the games played, it's incredibly significant. So, so to be involved with a club that bears that's this region's name is something that's not lost on me. And I've loved being able to stop, given the fact that I'm living here at East Fremantle Oval and see the boys training there in recent times. Last Friday night, I jumped the fence and had a chat to an old teammate of mine who's actually coaching South Fremantle um, and get an understanding of the importance of football in this region, for me, is something that's really important. Um, like many in the room here today, I've spent the majority of my life in and around football in one form or another. My experience has been deep and varied and I consider myself really fortunate to have been so closely attached to our great game. In considering the role, the first thing that really struck me about the club was the potential it had to be a significant player in the AFL landscape. Our membership and supporter base is as significant as is passionate. And while currently Richmond set the, set the benchmark in terms of commercial, traditional commercial metrics of an AFL club with 103,000 members, average crowds of 61,000, TV ratings of 637,000 as an average, I think it's worth noting that in 2010 we had more members than Richmond Football Club and about the same average crowds. So to me that underlies the opportunity that our club has in front of it. We have a remarkable and valuable core membership base, starting with you in this room, who will never take for granted. But as we build to deliver a period of sustained and ongoing on-field success, I think we all know what sort of a club we can be. We've got a new training and administration facility that's the equal of any in the competition. We play in one of the most amazing stadiums in the world. We have a heartland and region that provides us with a history and heritage that our nearest neighbour cannot replicate. And as Dale mentioned, we will continue to drive our ongoing presence and relationship with this area in the manner, in the manner that it should be as our heartland and home. The other key driver of our success will be our people. I've been fortunate to have the experience of leading a renewal of a football program and a club. And while the facilities and equipment and everything that goes with putting an AFL team on a park is important, our differentiator and competitive advantage will be born out of the culture we build and the people that we attract, retain and develop. I've only been, thank you. I've, admittedly, I've only spent two weeks with the people lucky enough to represent you on a daily basis. And whilst it's clearly still early, I'm incredibly excited about the calibre, character and capability of our people and what we're going to be able to achieve together. The foundations have been laid, as Dale, as Dale outlined, by some great football people. 
and my ongoing and overriding drive and, drive and focus will revolve around our people. My background and experience has helped me see and understand the importance of continuing to build a team ethos and culture which will help deliver sustained success and I can't wait to get to work as we set about realising the opportunity that's so clearly in front of us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dale and the board for providing me with the honour to help lead this club and it is help, it's not me out in the front alone or Justin or Peter as our football boss or Dale as the chairman, this is a collective group as we look to grow into our next phase of success. I very much look forward to meeting you all and joining you on what I believe will be one hell of a ride. Go Freo.